Okay guys, so welcome to a very special video. And this is a special video because this is the first ever review and analysis I've done on a Fluger reel. And it's not just any Fluger, it's the top of the line Patriarch XT. Now this reel was sent to me by a subscriber named Sam who also sent his Revo Premiere and I'm sure you've seen the video on that as well as an Ardent. Now, originally when I took a look at the information on this Patriarch, I wasn't gonna do a review on it, but since it's such a beautiful reel, and I'm gonna let you guys take a good look at the details on this thing. I decided to do one anyway, but I'll go over the reason why I almost didn't do a review towards the end of the video. Now while I'm showing you this reel, let's go over the history of the Patriarch. XT reel. Now I believe this is the second generation of the Patriarch XT. There was a first generation that started gaining popularity around the same time that the Abu Garcia Revo Premier Generation 2 started becoming popular. So both of those reels were kind of like cult sleeper reels. And it's not surprising, it's because those reels are, I would say, 95% the same. But as you can see by these pictures that I've dug up, that the Patriarch XT was actually a much better looking reel. It's got those blue anodized side plates and it has a lot more detail. You can see the thumb bar and the spool was a lot more detailed. And to be honest, I almost bought one of those back in the day, but I decided on the Revo Elite IB instead but the reel was $249 and the price has stayed the same at $249. So before I go into the specs on this reel, in case you didn't know, Fluger reels are made by the same company that makes your Abu Garcia Revos, your Luz, your Bass Pro Shops reels, and I'm sure other companies use them as well. And that company is Doyo in Korea. And I believe this is made in Korea. Yep, it's got the sticker right there. Now, since the Patriarch is made in the same factory as a lot of other branded reels, it doesn't come as a big surprise that the specs on this reel are very similar. So let's go over them real quick. Now it's got an aluminum frame with carbon side plates. And the marketing term for Fluger is C45 carbon. It's got a carbon fiber bent or swept handle. And it's 85 millimeters, which I think is fine, but by today's standards, I think it's a little short. Now, it comes with a total of 11 bearings. So that's 10 ball bearings and one roller bearing. And I don't think there's any Doyo made reel that comes with more bearings than 11, at least for now. Now, they made a big deal about the main shaft and the main gear being aircraft grade aluminum. And this reel, a lot of the details on this reel is made to save weight. Now it's got a clicking spool tension and I believe the clicks are a little bit closer spaced together than let's say on an Abu. Of course it's got a clicking drag star that's made of aluminum. And if you take a close look at this reel, you'll see that this is based on the old Revo 3 frame and body. And I'm pulling out my Revo Elite 8 to show you guys. Now, of course, the frame is modified a little bit at the front and the side plates are a little different, but the basic size and shape are the same. But I also should say this is now Sam's Revo Elite 8. So since this is based on the Revo 3 frame and body, that means that the thumb bar is rock solid. That means there's no mush when it's not engaged and there's no mush when it is engaged. 
Uh, that also means that the amount of pressure it takes to engage the thumb bar is a little bit more than the current Revo 4s, but I'll take that over a mushy thumb bar any day. And all the Revo 4s that I've owned or played with have had mushy thumb bars. And they also say that it has a titanium line guide. And I'm pretty sure that means it's titanium coated. But as you can see, it's a normal small line guide and it's kind of close to the spool. Now Fluger says that it has a carbon fiber drag system. So I'm sure that means that the washer is carbon fiber or washers, but it doesn't give any kind of number as to the ultimate stopping power. But since this is a Doyo made reel, I'm sure it's up there. Usually reels that come from the Doyo factory have huge drag numbers. Okay, so I got my scale out and Fluger says that this reel weighs only 5.8 ounces. So let's see if that's true. Now if that's true, that's going to make it lighter than the Abu Garcia Revo Premier and approaching the Daiwa Stees. Yep, right at 5.875. Let's check one more time. 5.875. So yeah, this is lighter than the more expensive Revo Premier. It's lighter than the Chronarch MGL. Uh, pretty much lighter than anything that would be considered competition for this reel. And it does feel very, very light. All right, so now it's time to get to the braking system and the spool. Okay, so now it's time to get to the meat and potatoes of any bait caster. And that's gonna be the spool weight and the braking system. Now, despite this being based off of the old generation three Revo frames, they've eliminated that long screw that usually went across the frame that you had to unscrew to get the side plate off. They went with a much easier design and it might be hard to see, but there's an arrow here and you just take this little latch or this little lever you flip it open and you twist up and that's it. The side plate is attached and spring loaded. And here is the braking system. Now Fluger opted to stick with the dual brake design, meaning you got your centrifugal brakes right here. And then you got your magnetic brakes right here. Now let's pull the spool out, take a closer look at these brakes. Now these are the older pin style brakes. They're not the flying arm of the newer centrifugal systems. And basically they're kind of like the old Shimano VBS. You just kind of plop these brakes in and out and they'll click to let you know that you've turned them off and on. But they're kind of hard to see. And what I mean is you can't really tell if they're off and on just by looking at them from an average distance. And that was one of the things I didn't like about my Revo Elite IB. I had to really look to see whether the brakes were off or on. And of course you got your standard Korean MagTrack system. Now I'm wondering if this is gonna be like the old dual braking where you can actually deactivate all these centrifugal brake arms or pins and just run magnetic. Now my Revo Elite IB, the magnets were definitely strong enough to run magnets only. And I'm wondering if this Patriarch XT is the same way. And I'm gonna have to find out. But anyway, let's get to the spool weight here. Now the spool is 33 millimeters. I've already checked and all right, now it feels pretty light. 12.64. So that is actually very, very light. And keep in mind, it's got this spool bearing on it. 
So even with the spool bearing, this spool weighs less than a Metanium <laughs> MGL spool. And in fact, I'm gonna take that bearing off and see what it really weighs. Okay, so spool bearing removed. Let's take a closer look at this spool. It's actually very, very striking. Now it's like a dark gray color, but there are a lot of silver accents and is very, very heavily ported. And everything has a silver accent on this reel, which makes it really, really good looking in my opinion. And as you can see, it's pretty deep. I'm not sure about the spool capacity. Um, I'm sure it's probably similar to the Revo Premier, which holds a lot of line. But let's get to the spool weight. Now I'm assuming it's going to be around 11 grams. 11.08, so almost 11.1 grams. So that's actually pretty light. Now not nearly as light as the Revo Premier spool, but it is lighter than the much more expensive Titanium MGL, the Cronarch MGL, the Bantam MGL, and it's probably lighter than even the $600 Antares A. So this reel may have a good chance of dethroning the mighty Antares A in a quarter ounce casting plug competition. So we may have to try that out before I send these reels back to Sam. So let's talk about my favorite part of this reel so far, and that is all the design details. And it has quite a lot. Let's start off with the frame and body. Now the frame has got this very smooth, satiny, matte finish. Very nice to touch. And of course the side plates are this white color. That's not a flat white, but they have pearl in it. It's very pearlescent. And it's set off nicely by dark chrome trim, like on the nose piece right here. The thumb bar. And of course the magnetic brake adjustment. Now let's talk about this handle. Now it is carbon fiber of course, but it's hard to see, but they beveled the edges, much like Daiwa did to the Stees. And that brings us to the nut retainer. As you can see, it's a very distinct design. It's not a generic nut retainer like you'll find on, let's say, other reels like this Fishband GH100. It's very angular and distinctive, but I wish they would have colored it a bright silver so you could see it better. Now let's talk about the Dragstar next. Now, one dead giveaway that a reel is made by the Doyle factory is that they use the same generic drag star over several different reels and several different brands. In fact, here it is right here. Now Doyo will put this drag star on Abu Garcia Revos, Luz, Bass Pro Shops, and they really haven't changed it much over the years. But on the Patriarch, as you can see, it's a lot thinner and sharper, therefore saving weight. And you can see the trim, it's got these silver dots as well as that silver ring. And got your gear ratio and it says instant anti-reverse as the riding. Now let's take a look at the spool tension. And it's kind of hard to see, but there is an indicator notch there. And they should have giving it a brighter color like red or silver be a lot easier to see but it's there nonetheless and everything about this reel has silver anodization accents that are angled to where whenever you turn the reel it will reflect some kind of silver especially with this spool here as you can see and then the knob end caps you can see that Then of course on the spool tension, you can see the silver anodization. So 
If I put it here, you'll see that you can see the edges of the knob end caps. You can see the silver of the spool tension. You can see the silver of the spool itself. And speaking of knobs, they are very soft and they are EVA foam, but they drilled out three holes on the sides of each of the knobs and that's to showcase the carbon core that's in these knobs. Now, I'm not going to take the knobs off to see exactly what it is, but that is a feature that they've listed on the box. And of course that's to save weight. Now my very favorite piece on this reel is going to be this right here. The handle side inlay insert. Hopefully you'll be able to see, but that is carbon with silver trim. And this is not like fake carbon, it's actually real because I can feel the weave. And it goes all the way around. It's very subtle. It's one of those things you have to kind of really take a look at, but that is nice. And they actually listed that on the features as well to save weight. But that's my favorite styling detail on this Fluger Patriarch. Okay, so for the last part of this video, remember how I told you that I was not planning on doing a video of this reel? And that's because when I went online to look up the specs, it turns out this reel apparently is no longer being made. It's discontinued. So it's not on Tackle Warehouse's website. It's not even on Fluger's website. And in fact, I believe Fluger have discontinued all their upper end reels and they're only going to be making like $99 and under reels from now on. Now it's still available at other retailers, but uh, that's kind of a shame. Now Fluger, I think is known more for their spinning reels, especially their Patriarch spinning reels, which are known to be the cheapest magnesium framed spinning reels in the world today. And it's kind of a shame that they're moving away from the higher end baycaster market but i understand the reasoning why maybe they don't sell quite as many and the competition for this reel at the 250 fifty dollar price point is going to be tough you got your corrado dc you got your tatula elite and you know you got your chronarch mgl for a little bit more you got your revo ike so not to say that this is a bad performing reel but the competition is just way too tough at this price point. But I will say it does give you quite a lot of reel for the money. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have time to do a lot of testing with this reel, but the one test that I am gonna put it through before I send it back to Sam is see if it can challenge the mighty Antares A for the quarter ounce casting crown. So see you out on the field.